dealing with heat transfer now. This is the way heat can transfer from one place to another. There are three ways in which heat can transfer. The first way is by conduction. The second way is by convection and convection currents. And the third way is by radiation. Now conduction, this happens in solids. Convection happens in both gases and liquids. And radiation is unusual in that it doesn't need material to transfer the energy. The other two ways need material to transfer the energy. Radiation doesn't. So, for example, the sun shining in space, the radiation and the heat radiation from that sun can travel through space, and there's nothing in space. It's what they call a vacuum, because there's no gases or anything there. And the radiation just travels through space and can get to Earth. So radiation is emitted, given out, and absorbed by lots of things. First of all, we'll deal with conduction, which takes place in solids. Now here we have got a bar that's being held in a flame, and it's made of solid material. Now the heat from the flame will warm the particles, the atoms in the bar, and that energy will be transferred across the bar so the heat energy moves along until eventually the person holding it is going to go ow. Now metals are good conductors so if that bar was made of metal that person would shout ow pretty quickly because the heat will travel very quickly. Plastic and wood for examples are examples of materials that are not good conductors. Let's have a look what happens when things do conduct, solid material conducts. Solid materials are made up of atoms and they're represented here by these little circles. So you can imagine these little balls here being atoms, the material that the solid's made up of. Now if we heat the one in the corner, the heat will transfer from this one by vibrating, the atom will start to vibrate. And because it's in close proximity to another atom, it will cause that one to vibrate, so the heat energy gets transferred by vibrations going across. Now you will notice that in a solid the atoms are stationary, they do not move about, they can only vibrate really, but they don't change places. So what happens is these materials vibrate and the heat energy gets transferred by the vibrations going from one atom to another atom to another atom and so on and so forth. We'll move on to convection and then this is how heat travels in gases and liquids. So in this situation here we've got a hot radiator and we've got a room that's being warmed up by the radiator. So we'll find out how the room gets heated up by that radiator. Now to start with we've got cold air next to the radiator. Now as those air particles start to get warmed up by the radiator, they will rise. We all know that hot air rises. So the hot air next to the radiator will rise up to the ceiling. This will get replaced by cold air. So the air, the hot air rises and the cold air will move in to take its place. As the hot air rises up, it will start to lose its energy because it's warming up the room and the things in it, the walls, the ceiling, everything like that. And the hot air will start to cool and it will fall down again. So it will join the cold air that's coming in to replace the hot air that's rising. And so what this gives rise to is this convection cycle which keeps going. It keeps heating up the air, the air goes round, cools down, comes back, gets heated up again, and goes round like that. Now that has, is how the heat gets transferred primarily from the radiator to the rest of the room by what they call a convection current. So convection currents is how heat travels in gases, like in the room, because you've got air, which is the gas, and also in liquids. If you can imagine filling that room up with water and keeping the radiator on, the room will get warmed up in the same way because the liquid atoms and molecules can move in the same way as the gaseous atoms and molecules. 
So because liquids, the atoms can, and molecules can move, it heats up in the same way as in gases. The third method of heat transfer is infrared by infrared radiation. Now all things emit infrared radiation and they absorb infrared radiation as well. You can't see this radiation normally, but if you wear these night vision goggles like these here, like that lady's got there, and like the little hamster's got there, whatever it is, it allows you to see the infrared radiation and you see a picture a bit like this here. So the things that you can see really brightly are things that are giving off lots of infrared and they're giving off lots of heat. And the things that, which aren't so bright are things that aren't emitting as much uh, infrared. Now we call giving off heat, in this case emitting, emitting radiation. And the heat is in the form of infrared radiation. Infrared there. So if we have a look at our night vision picture here. We can see the person here, which is quite warm relative to the rest of the surroundings. So that person is giving off quite a lot of heat, so they show up quite quite light. So they're quite hot relatively. Um, what else is hot in the photograph? Those lights there, they're obviously giving off quite a lot of infrared radiation and they're coming out very, very light colored. The ground on the other hand is pretty cold by comparison. So that doesn't show up as brightly on our night vision image. So the thing to remember is all things emit infrared radiation and all things absorb infrared radiation. And these night vision goggles, they allow you to see the infrared radiation, which you can't normally see. It's the heat that's being emitted from the bodies, as they call them in physics, the materials, the objects in the picture. I've said that all things emit and absorb infrared radiation. And we'll start, first of all, by what we mean by absorbing infrared radiation. So if we've got these two cars here, two minis, which are identical apart from their colours and the, the surface of them. One is a dark black colour, dull surface, and the other one is a shiny white one. And we've got our sun up here. Imagine it's a hot day and there's lots of infrared radiation coming through space because it can travel through a vacuum, doesn't need material to go through. So the infrared travels through space, comes through our atmosphere, and nice shiny day starts to heat up these two cars. Which one will heat up the quickest? In other words, which one will absorb the radiation, the infrared radiation, the fastest? Now I'm sure we all know that darker surfaces absorb infrared radiation faster than lighter colored shiny surfaces. I mean, that's why we're always told to wear light colors on a hot day, a hot sunny day, because they're not gonna heat up as quick. So in this case, the mini, the dark dull colored mini, will heat up faster than the light colored, white colored mini. And it's because darker dull surfaces absorb infrared radiation at a faster rate than shiny light colored surfaces. So the black mini will heat up the quickest. And it will heat up quicker than the lighter shiny mini. So to summarize, dark stroke dull surfaces absorb, they take in infrared, whoops, infrared radiation faster than light colored shiny surfaces. Now we move on to the situation where instead of absorbing infrared radiation, we're going to think about giving out infrared radiation. And that's uh, emitting, we say emitting for giving out. 
So we have two identical teapots. I know they're not strictly identical, but it's the best I could find. So we have got a dark, dull teapot here, and we've got a light, shiny one here. Now, the question is, which tea, in which teapot, will cool down the fastest? In other words, which one will emit radiation the quickest you know give it out the quickest which will be the best emitter will it be the dark one or will it be the light one well the dark one will give out the heat the quickest it's the best absorber of infrared but it's also the best emitter of infrared radiation so darker dull stroke dull surfaces emit infrared radiation at a faster rate than lighter shiny surfaces So in this case, if we had the tea at the same temperature to start with in both teapots, the one in the black teapot would tea in the black teapot would cool down the quickest. So black teapots will cool down faster because it will give out, it will emit its infrared radiation a lot faster than the light coloured one. To summarize, the best absorbers of infrared radiation are also the best emitters of infrared radiation. Dark colored stroke dull surfaces are the best emitters of infrared radiation. And they are also the best absorbers of infrared radiation. Light-coloured, shiny surfaces are the worst emitters and they are the worst absorbers.